Hello and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the YouTube channel trying to bring you daily uploads or stream a day. Yesterday I uploaded two videos. Make sure to go check that out. We talked about Lobotegi and also did a video on Ben Johnson maybe getting a new contract at West Ham United. Today we're talking about Eric Ten Hag. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you are new. We're trying to hit 500 subscribers before the end of the year. Um, I do videos on other teams as well. So... Eric Ten Hag, let's talk about Man United, because it was around 10.30, I assume, where I looked at my phone and it said from David Ornstein that Ten Hag was staying. Now, to be honest with you, when Jacob Steinberg said that regardless of the FA Cup, Ten Hag will go, we all should have realised that he's staying because it's Jacob Steinberg. Um, I don't know whether the FA Cup had anything to do with it. My thing is, is that uh, I don't think Ineos are, are as uh, influential, not not as influential, but are going to be as impactful as people think. As much as they brought in the right people in the recruitment side, uh, this is not a serious, um, a serious news headline if you want to make yourself big as an owner, if you want to make yourself, um, you know, a, a, like... Like, trustworthy as an owner is the right word. Yes, Ten Hag did win the FA Cup with Manchester United, but Ten Hag also finished eighth. Would I take eighth in a trophy over just finishing fourth? Yes, I would. Um, however, at uh, Manchester United, you should be finishing in the right league positions and also winning trophies. Um, his first season was really good, playing uh, almost a hybrid style of football, but he ended up becoming a lot of moments type you know, moments type uh, situations where it'll be maybe a Rashford magic out of nowhere, Bruno Fernandes magic out of nowhere, where it's just an individual getting them out of a situation. Um, and that's what uh, that that's why a lot a lot of that happened under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and I believe they've gone back to that. The only way that this can work under Eric Ten Hag again is if he goes back to what everyone wanted him to do, and that was to play Ajax style of football. You know, play that style of football, have your own philosophy and get the best out of the players during that because otherwise he wouldn't have signed Lissandro Martinez and Anthony. But however, he he saw the Brighton and Brentford game on his first two games and was like, I'm not, I'm not going to play this style of play. I'm going to play a bit, of a bit of a hybrid. But he also needs Rashford to have one of his purple patch seasons again. Um, he needs Bruno Fernandes to, you know, contribute like he did in the 1920-2021 season he needs um he needs Harry Maguire to defend even better than he's ever defended before because I believe this appointment is more for the fact that Manchester United are not going to spend much money and I feel like if they had brought in a new manager like a Deserby let's say and they didn't spend any money a lot of the flack would be on the owners however if they just get Keep the new manager that's won them the trophy. They get a bit of PR. And nobody's really focused on the transfers that much. However, I don't think they're going to sign barely anyone. I feel like a lot of players are going to leave. Uh, Casemiro will probably leave. Christian Eriksen will probably leave. I'm going to assume Lindelof is going to leave. I'm going to assume... Fuck knows what's happening with Malassia. But Man United are going to sign another left back regardless. Due to the fact malassia has got a long-term injury. I don't know if he's still injured now. And Luke Shaw is injured every year. I uh, don't know if wan Bissaka and Dallow will stay. I'm, I'm assuming wan Bissaka will stay and Dallow will stay. I don't know what's going to happen with Anthony. What does this mean for Ahmad Diallo now? Because he's a talented player. Uh, but he won't play under this manager. Uh, someone like a Kobe, Kobe uh, Maynou. He won't develop under this manager. So it, his career is going to come to a bit of a halt. And as predicted, Man United are probably going to ruin another talent uh, once again. I feel sorry for the kid because he's surrounded by a lot of players that aren't as technically good as him. Even if you go back to the FA Cup final, only Bruno Fernandes and Lissandro Martinez was keeping the ball as good as Kobe Maynou. And I don't even rate um, uh, Bruno Fernandes like that. But I remember him passing to another player, then panicking with the ball all the time. But they're not as technically secure as Kobe Maynou. And this guy's like 18, 19. And he's far... Head and shoulders above all of these players at the club. By far the best. By far the best player. 
someone like a Garnacho is a moments player, someone like a Rashford's a moments player. I feel like if these owners were really serious, then a lot of these players would be gone. A lot of like a lot of these players would be sold, but the big players as well. The big players, the big names. And they'd actually try and refresh the squad. As much as we criticize Chelsea, Chelsea have better owners. Chelsea at least are a bit more ruthless. The problem with Chelsea is that they're a mixed bag when it comes to signings. Like they're linked with John Duran. We'll get into that probably another time. John Duran would be a terrible signing. <clears throat> And a lot of that is to do with, like, well, I don't know whether the whole 25 and under thing is true because they signed tossing around a buyer, but uh, you can't just go for a youth project either. Now, if any of us are going to go for a youth project, you, you're going to have to expect uh, Man United to finish eighth again because that's where they will finish once again. They finish, what did they finish last season? Seventh? Um or did Newcastle finish above them? I'm not I'm not too sure. I actually think Man United finished below them. And then Newcastle... Yeah, Newcastle finished 7th. So Man United finished 8th. I don't believe Ineos are going to do anything serious with Manchester United. A lot of those same players are going to stay there. You've got Rasmus Hoyland, yeah. You signed for big money. He's a young striker. He put all the pressure on him. But he now, and he's not got a striker to help him. Because Anthony Martial was injured. And Anthony Martial has been injury prone for a very long time. Anthony Martial should have left the club a long time ago. He's a, he, he was a good player with his day, Anthony Martial, but it's just... I know Man United fans love him. I know, I know he's like a, a cult hero because of that charm that they have about him. And they, they gave him a good send-off. But on, like he's had too many injuries and that killed him. That killed all of his pace and mobility. He's a technical player. But, that, but other than that, it hasn't worked out for the past few years. Someone like the Jadon Sancho saga, apparently they're going to, uh, according to Simon Stone, God knows if he's reliable, apparently that's a £40 million, um, car, that, that that's the price they're asking for with Jadon Sancho. Obviously, I think Jadon Sancho is worth a bit more than that. However, the stock is low. Dortmund won't, might not be able to afford that, so it's going to be interesting to see what clubs come in for him. I have a feeling that Man United are going to have to swallow their pride and put him out on loan again because then no one's going to pay what they want for him. I would take him at West Ham, by the way. Any day. Any day of the week. I just believe Jadon Sancho is another victim of Man United ruining talent. And I feel like that's going to that's gonna happen with Kobe Mainu as well. Rasmus Hoyland, again, a moment's player because he's a young player. A young player with no one to look up to in that squad. I don't know who I'd look up to. If I, if I was to join Man United, I don't know who I'm looking up to. Varane's left and Casemiro's on his last legs. So those are the only players I would have look, looked up to in the first place. They're going to need another centre-back because of Varane leaving. And your centre-back pairing cannot be Lissandro Martinez or Harry Maguire. Lissandro is a good player. Uh, but Harry Maguire is still there. I don't believe he's uh, good enough for Manchester United. I never thought he was. But, however, he did have a good season last season. So, the only way they can go back is if Ten Hag decides to go back to the football he was originally going to play in the first place. Um, he's not. He's barely going to have any players anyway. And also, this... this um, Keeping of Eric Ten Hag, in my opinion, it's just for the excuse of if Man United lose uh, a lot of games again next season and finish eighth and, you know, they lose to Fulham at home again or, you know, games like that, they keep they lose to Brian at home, Palace at home again. Then the Ten Hag will have the excuse of, well, he didn't sign anybody, so it's not Ten Hag's fault. But I would also argue that He's not necessarily getting the best out of the players he has at his disposal. I feel like a coach can squeeze more and exceed players higher of the level than they actually are, because that's what good coaches do. I just don't I just don't know what I'm seeing with Ted Hag. I don't know what I watch him with Manchester United. I don't know how Manchester United play. I didn't know how they were playing last season. I remember seeing when they when the other team have the ball, the defensive line is right on the edge of their own box. However, the three midfielders that they have, that they were playing, whether it's Maidu, Casemiro, Fernandes, Mount Eriksen, it could be anyone. They're all close together and high up the pitch. So if you're a number 10 for the other team, you just stand behind them and hopefully one of your midfielders or defenders are good enough to pass it between the lines. Once that happens, they're in so much space that you don't know what Man United are really trying to do. It's such a mishmash of players. 
that I'm not sure Man United will finish top six next season. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Social media is over in the description. If you want to follow me, the email for the inquiries. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.